To customize a node's behavior, you need to edit its configuration. Every node defines its own set of properties and the UI for its edit dialog. But there are also a common set of properties that can be set against all nodes. This video looks at how you edit nodes and what options are available. To edit a node, you double click on it in the main workspace. This opens the node edit dialog, which is split into three separate tabs. The properties tab contains the node specific properties. The description tab allows you to add documentation to each node. And the appearance tab allows you to customize how the node appears in the editor. Let's look at each of those in turn. The properties tab is different for every node in the palette. Some will provide a plain list of properties and allow you to set values against each one. Some will provide more complex interfaces. In either case, this tab is where you can customize the behavior of the node. By convention, although not required, the node will have a name field. Giving your nodes a meaningful name is very helpful, particularly when you need to search your flows for a particular node later on. As well as giving your nodes meaningful names, another useful feature is being able to add documentation to the node itself. This can be done on the description tab using markdown format to give a richer output. This documentation is displayed in the information sidebar whenever the node is selected in the workspace. On the appearance tab, you can select whether the node label is shown or not, change the icon of the node, or customize the port labels, which are shown as tooltips when your mouse hovers over any of the input or output ports. Once you've edited the node, clicking the done button closes the dialog. The node shows a blue dot as it now contains changes that have not yet been deployed. If the node contains any configuration errors, it's displayed with a red triangle. Hovering the mouse over the triangle will display a list of the node properties that contain the errors. The node edit dialog also allows you to disable the node entirely by toggling the option in the footer of the edit dialog. When it's disabled, the node does not get started by the runtime and messages will not pass through it. This can be useful, for example, if you need to temporarily disable part of a flow for testing purposes.